make sure we're live. Let's check this out. Ooh. Hi everyone, this is Chicho. Welcome to another live stream. Today is November 26, 2019. And we're doing a live stream, Julian Assange open discussion. This is part five. Okay. Now we've already done a few of these. Uh, we have a we, uh, YouTube WikiLeaks um, Julian Assange playlist. And uh, let me grab the playlist, uh, just link it up here. If you go to the main uh, page, t -t 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 WikiLeaks and Julian Assange. Okay, oops, let me, let's look at the, uh, what do you call it, the full playlist. And uh, just this morning I loaded on, uh, as I promised, I loaded on the soft-spoken reading of WikiLeaks introduction to the Guantanamo Bay files, the leaks, which is about a 26 minute video. Uh, so we have that up right now Oop, and here is the loops and here is the link to the playlist void hook I made it <laughs> I'm in coach let's go welcome welcome berserker LD hey Chicho greetings from Uruguay greetings salutations Uruguay I haven't been following too much news uh, from Uruguay uh, actually for the last few months a lot of other stuff going on down there uh, so i've been busy with that stuff um, but you guys had an amazing president a while ago first country is it uruguay i'm pretty sure it's uruguay you guys uh, first country in the world to legalize or decriminalize cannabis i believe right as for what we're going to do today let me give you a little rundown of the playlist that we have Okay, what we've covered so far. Back in 2017, I'll go smoke a cig and I'll be right back. I know I should stop. I won't tell you. I won't tell you to stop, Void Hook, but you should stop. Intrepid, how are you doing? Good morning, good morning. Welcome, welcome, brother. Um, so back in 2017, Hannah, how are you doing? I released a video uh, reading the Vault 7 release from WikiLeaks, doing a whisper video. And then back in 2000, and, uh, I mentioned that we we're going to get into it. Dante, how you doing? Uh, I mentioned that we we're going to start getting into heavy duty uh, WikiLeaks and Julian Assange stuff. Once things kicked into, you know, the last leg of uh, this battle. Uh, so that's going to decide a lot of things for the coming decades to come coming next few years to come but coming decades to come most likely nicholas how's it going brother welcome welcome uh so in 2007 we did a reading of wikileaks vault 7 and then uh we started back up we covered some other julian assange stuff but basically in 2019 we kicked things up into high gear when julian assange got uh, taken out of the ecuadorian embassy we did a couple of live streams then and then few weeks ago we started covering Julian Assange heavy duty when uh, the extradition hearing uh, started right so we've done a fair bit we've looked at the history lonely piggy morning all hope all as well doing good doing good brother thank you um, so we've covered the history of Julian Assange we've covered some of the propaganda regarding Julian Assange we've covered some of the leaks uh, from Julian Assange specifically we looked at the collateral murder video and talked about it and there's been a lot of discussion on chat uh, for these live streams of what's going on and um, we've looked at uh, Nils uh, the UN special rapporteur on torture uh, that his release saying that Julian Assange is being tortured right and it's unprecedented what's going on um, so this just this morning um we released and we also read during a live stream the wikileaks release of the guantanamo bay files but this morning i released a sort of a, a better audio version of a standalone 
reading of the introduction of the Guantanamo Bay, Bay files from WikiLeaks. And we're going to continue to do soft spoken or whisper readings, ASMR readings of uh, releases from Guantanamo Bay as uh, time progresses. Okay. Uh, so today we're following things up with uh, what I have in mind anyway. We'll see where the chat takes us. We'll follow it up with a, I got a handful of other things uh, lined up here. Let me bring up my notepad, right? Oh my God. Yes, ASMR. You're the best boy. Awesome. <laughs> Uh, it's a nice reading and it's an important document it's an important document just to let you know how important the um, the guantanamo bay files are okay i'm gonna read you a comment okay that was posted this morning like i released it like a couple hours ago right so oops why am i opening this up oops too late already opened <laughs> um one person commented you know and they were jokingly later on they posted a comment it, it it's it they were joking right so one person posted a comment saying maga keep guantanamo be open uh, keep america safe from our enemies and then someone else commented hell yes remember 9 11 and may hellfire missiles raid down on those that wish harm to us now the person that originally posted this later on he posted a comment saying um chicho if uh, the u.s has to torture oh not that one uh, the U.S. has to protect its business. Iraq equals oil. And then they said, if the U.S. has to torture someone to defend the American domination world, we torture. If we had dropped a bomb, we dropped a bomb, blah, blah, blah. My thing was, you know, you have to add oil equals money for corporations and their puppets and their puppet masters, right? Sorry if I'm going through this pretty fast because it's just a comment. Um, but one thing I did want to point out, right? People have to appreciate how important WikiLeaks has been to the world stage in human history it's incredibly important what's taking place right now right did you see the new re yes i did and i ha actually have this lined up uh internal opcw emails and this is uh this is the most recent major leak that wikileaks has released saying that the opcw the watchdog i forget what it uh, stands for it stands for the organization for the prohibition of chemical weapons faked the evidence of chemical attack in syria which was leading to war with syria where the united states and its western allies were going to attack syria and they did but initially they want to go a lot harder and this was the excuse that they were using right so this is the organization for the prohibition of chemical weapons releasing fake information to lead to war right humongous humongous right and we're going to do a reading of this as well the introduction to this i haven't read it all yet um i skimmed through it but most likely we'll release some kind of video on this as well okay it's it's ridiculously important okay but just to let you know how important some of these leaks are the collateral murder video it should be obvious to everyone that is ridiculously important right the guantanamo bay files release which was let me take you to the link a link of guantanamo bay da, 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 da. and i'm trying to source everything in the, in the description of the videos of course right and here's a source material to uh, get more files wikileaks reveals secret files on all uh, guantanamo prisoners right and the part that i quoted for this person is saying that we have to keep america great again uh, because we have to bomb these people and stuff like this right is the s isn 212 so we're going to look up the prisoner number for this person right i uh, oops s and 212 and this is basically this part is that 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 is um, basically some of the story behind some of the people that western powers tortured to get information about whoever they want to get information and this part of the wikileaks guantanamo files leak specifically states this so they're using nox gas over there well, 
yeah check this out this was i'm just going to read you a paragraph and it's available you know we read through the whole thing in the the soft spoken reading of wikileaks the introduction to guantanamo bay files right and here let me provide the link in the chat just in case you guys want to go to it yourself okay uh description of prisoner ibn al shahiki al libi isn one two one two the emir of a military training camp for which abu Zab zabagi was the gatekeeper who despite having uh, his camp closed by the taliban in 2000 because he refused to allow it to be taken over by al-qaeda is described in these documents as osama bin laden's military commander in tora bora soon after his capture in december 2001 al-libi al-libi was rendered by the cia to egypt where under torture he falsely confessed that al-qaeda operatives had been meeting with saddam hussein to discuss obtaining chemical and biological weapons ali libi recanted this particular lie but it was nevertheless used by the bush administration administration to justify the invasion of iraq in march 2003 Al Libibi was never sent to Guantanamo, although at some point, probably in 2006, the CIA sent him back to Libya, Libya, where he was imprisoned and where he died allegedly by committing suicide in May 2019. Right now, this guy's lie under torture was one of the reasons that was given to invade Iraq, which resulted in thousands of American soldiers dying tens of thousands being seriously injured millions of refugees being created and hundreds of thousands of people dying right this is how important the leak of the guantanamo bay files are and this is one of the reasons that the western powers are trying to crucify julian assange okay now let's uh, I'm just gonna let's read an article and what we're gonna do after this we're gonna listen to another interview by Nils um, I forget his name <laughs> the special repertoire Nils Melzer okay the UN special repertoire Mil Nils Melzer talking about Julian Assange and we've already looked at the first sort of a whole bunch of videos that are released at the beginning of uh, the situation right so let's read this article first and we can definitely continue on with uh, uh, with the chat uh, is al-qaeda now isis uh, morning chicho riot how are you doing is al-qaeda now isis it, it all these organizations morph um, is al-qaeda isis let's put it this way initially according to the cia's estimate at the beginning of the century in 2000 or so there were only a few hundred al-qaeda operatives after an invasion of iraq uh, after the invasion uh, occupation of afghanistan and iraq now we have tens of thousands of al-qaeda isis jihadists or whatever you want to call them right obviously the strategy is not working and al-qaeda is the first group not the first but one of the first groups that really came out of the intervention of western powers as well as russia into afghanistan in the 1970s and 1980s and there's a complicated story it's uh it has to do with uh with the cold war at the time right because the government in afghanistan if you look at, you can find pictures of afghanistan in the 1970s and stuff it was very liberal right and the government that was coming into power was more communist leaning and then what happened was the western powers they feared communism so much that they started flooding afghanistan with weapons and trying to depose get rid of do a coup in afghanistan and russia basically invaded afghanistan to support the regime in afghanistan and at that point in the 1980s the united states and its western allies made um, 
made allegiances with Al-Qaeda, right? And funded them where into the tombs of billions of dollars, right? And Iran Contra affairs associated with that, with South America and stuff like this, started funding them, the Muslim fundamentalists, with weapons, arms, training, right? To keep Russia busy. And the toll for Russia was so much that Russia left Afghanistan, right? And that resulted in the, the basically it was Russia's Vietnam, if you want to do a comparison of what the situation was like. And from then on, basically the fundamentalists took over Afghanistan and the Western powers were really the ones that gave birth to Al-Qaeda, which has branched off into multiple other uh, factions. We need a regime change, yeah. Let's read this article, okay. Osama bin Laden was literally called a hero in US back then, yeah. And the Taliban and stuff met with the Reagan, came and met with Reagan in the White House. The Taliban have been honored guest in the White House in the 1980s, okay. People need to appreciate this, okay. It, that, like, unbelievable, right? Now, back to Julian Assange. Right now, Julian Assange's health is in serious demise, right? There have been reports coming out and doctors writing urgent letters to the government of UK saying that Julian Assange needs serious medical help because he might die in prison if he's not given that medical help. Okay, so we're gonna most likely read this article as well. Uh, let me post this in the chat uh, just so you guys have it as well. And I'll once we load these up, uh, Sleepy Waves, how are you doing? Once we load these uh, this video up, this live stream up on, this will definitely go on YouTube as well, YouTube and BitChute. I'll have the links to these articles in the description, description of the video, okay? But right now, what I'd like to do is have a read through this article, uh, which I linked earlier, okay? Uh, apologies, I'm not, not going to read the chat, uh, but I'll catch, catch up with the chat as soon as we finish this article. And it's not very long. It's a fairly short article, but it, it's well written. It really explains uh, the situation we're in and its implications to our society. Okay. And it's written by John White. Okay. And uh, I hadn't, I, I, I don't know if I was. I think I was I'm following him on Twitter uh, or one other one of the other platforms that I'm on, but uh, I think that's where I came across across it. Okay, I'm just gonna check with chat one more time. Good. So, the slow motion execution of Julian Assange, and you know what? Let me link this up in the chat again, just in case for people. Uh, arriving now they might not see the chat okay this is the article that we're about to read the slow motion execution of julian assange by john white critical theorist walter benjamin uh critical theorist walter benjamin benjamin it was said it was who pointed out that there is no document of civilization which is not at the same time a document of barbarism considering that the slow motion execution of julian assange who's currently languishing in london's category uh, a belmarsh prison is taking place at the behest of british of a british legal system whose adherence boosts is a pillar of western civilization benjamin's observation is well made because be it no because be in no doubt the founder and former editor of wikileaks the publishing organization which since established in 2006 has removed the cloak of democracy from the face of an empire whose high crimes and war crimes would make genghis khan blush has been placed on a metaphorical cross at at in the name of nothing more than uh, ennobling uh, than vengeance and retribution. This article, when I, I'm gonna pause reading for a second. This article, when 
I'm reading it without reading it out loud. It's much easier to read than reading it out loud. Just letting you guys know. It's I love this article, by the way. Okay. Continuing on with the article. The chilling warning that Assange could die in the prison unless he received urgent medical treatment, a warning published in The Guardian in the form of an open letter signed by more than 60 doctors, should make every person of conscious and consciousness tremble with rage compounding his brutal treatment is the knowledge that he is not being forced to suffer in the name of british justice but instead in the name of british subservience to washington in this regard the british state is acting like a rogue state in evident evidencing no respect for international law or human rights much less basic human decency don't just take my word for it either nils melzer the u.n special repertoire on torture after visiting assange at belmash recently voiced strong concern over the conditions of his detention arguing arguing that quote the blatant and sub subtain are arbitrary arbitrariness shown by both the judiciary and the government in this case suggests an alarming departure from the uk's commitment to human rights and the rule of law this is setting a worrying example which is further reinforced by the government's recent refusal to conduct the low awaiting judicial inquiry into british involvement in the cia torture and rendition program end quote added to the revelations that while confined in the ecuadorian embassy between 2012 and 2019 where he'd sought political asylum fearing extradition to the u.s julian assange was recently being spied on by a spanish defense and private security company at the behest of u.s intelligence the revelations that the hus husband of judge presiding over his extradition to the u.s until recently lady emma or both not has financial links to the uk military establishment including institutions and individuals exposed by wikileaks and you have a case that it is so sordidly corrupt that it is no hyperbole to assert as precisely the aforementioned niels melsner did in an article back in june that this is not only about prosecuting assange but about preventing a precedent likely to seal the fate of Western democracy. Julian Assange, in his role as editor of WikiLeaks, has been the canary down the coal mine of this very Western democracy, exposing the rank hypocrisy, lies, exceptionalism, and barbarity that are embedded in its foundations. For so doing, he's now being forced to endure the kind of punishment that even kafka couldn't conjure up expanding on this literary theme it was american novelist thomas war wolf who in his essay god's lonely man argued that the loneliness loneliness is the universal yet unspoken fate of all in society he wrote quote the whole con conviction of my life now rests upon the belief that loneliness, far from being a rare and curious phenomenon, is the central and inevitable fact of human existence. End quote. The concept of the isolation and loneliness of the individual in society is one that has been explored continuously. In literature, Albert Kamas seminar work the stranger also titled the outsider 1942 describes the alienation of the novel's protagonist more salt before during and after his he kills a man in self-defense in first person narrative the reader is introduced to more salt's being no notified of his mother's death he attends the wake but refuses to view the body when all offered the chance later he attends the funeral but does not absent but but does so absent of any of the convictional emotions associated with um, bereavement when standing trial for killing the man in self-defense he likewise betrays no emotion 
as if passively accepting his fate. Morsaud's crime in the eye of society isn't so much that he killed a man, but that he demonstrated no emotion or remorse either in the aftermath or before when attending to his mother's death. This lack of emotion bespeaks a refusal to conform, an abnormality, thus making him out as a threat to the system and its moral ver vertices. Taken in context then, Julian Assange has provided the world with a glimpse of an empire in decline. More, he has provided it with a warning of the grim consequences if, like Camas Morsault, it remains passive in the face of the crimes and violations of human rights it commits on a daily basis in a desperate and cynical attempt to maintain its fading hege hegemony. It is why at this moment, languishing in Belmarsh Category A prison in London, the founder of WikiLeaks is indeed, God, indeed God's lonely man. Thus, it is the duty of all who believe in truth truth and justice to end his loneliness and with one voice demand his release for if julian assange is allowed to perish in prison not only will we be indicted in the court of history like him we may may well find ourselves indicted in the court of those who speak the language of democracy while practicing the law of the jungle end I thought this was a fantastic, fantastic article. Apologies for a little stumbling at the beginning. Uh, difficult, uh, very poetic article. Okay, well worth the read. Uh, well worth linking. Good afternoon, Olive. How are you doing? Good afternoon. Uh, well worth linking. Okay, and well worth sharing. what i like to do is let's kill the gitmo files as well is take a look at uh, about a 15 minute uh, q and a period with uh, nils melzer and this was uh, released recently i think this came out in uh, late october that i thought it was a fantastic interview can you link it i can see the link it just arrived did it just arrive okay here let me link it again because i know when some people uh, uh when you load on to the chat if uh, you haven't been there from the beginning and that's the article if you haven't been there from the beginning i don't think you see the lesser chat um mjl37 thank you for trying to post the link um in the chat the automated mod system that we have right now set up um, only myself and the mods are allowed to post links okay but thank you very much for uh, for doing it and i believe i've linked this in our discord page as well if i haven't please let me know and i will link it um, i might not have linked it i just came across this a couple of days ago um, I guess November 25th, today is the 26th. So I guess I came across this yesterday and I haven't had a chance to link it in the in the Discord uh, politics folder. Okay. So should we listen to this uh, little interview? And this, is, uh, this was posted. I tried to find the original of this, but I can't find the original. I'm not sure where Democracy Now! This was posted on Democracy Now! I'm not sure where Democracy Now! got the original of, of this from. Um, I don't think they provided the uh, link. Yeah, they, they haven't provided the original source, which is unfortunate. Can you briefly explain Assange's journey into prison? Like what happened in Ecuador and maybe beforehand? Uh, sleepy waves. Uh, we went into detail in this stuff. Um, here's the here's the playlist that we have regarding all the video all the content that we've put out regarding wikileaks um, it's a fair bit of info um, so to get a feel for what's going on i would basically go to uh, this one right here julian assange part one of two okay so i would say 
start from here because this is um, actually we as soon as it was extracted out of the Ecuadorian embassy we did these two live streams on April 11th and April 12th in 2019 uh, those were sort of the first two live streams we did specifically regarding Julian Assange and then once the extradition hearing started uh, we started with part one and then part two part three part four and this is part five that we're doing uh, his journey is uh, is it would take you know a three season Netflix series for us to to go through uh, if you were gonna do it I think I was there for the collateral murder one for sure I just don't remember so sleepy ways basically the story is WikiLeaks is a, a Julian Assange is the person that created uh, instigator for WikiLeaks and he's the publisher of WikiLeaks okay he released he's been releasing information WikiLeaks has been the source or has been the platform that whistleblowers have some whistleblowers have been using to leak information regarding the powers that be right those who pull have power may they be corporations or governments or institutions right so wikileaks has been acting as a platform to hold power accountable okay some of the information that they released power does not like to be released one of them being the guantanamo bay files the other one being the collateral murder video right revealing war crimes of the state the state that has been committing those war crimes will not be happy about it right even though it is to the betterment of humanity that we know who in our society is committing war crimes because they have to be punished right so basically he was in london false charges were brought on him he seeked asylum in the ecuadorian embassy is wikileaks a reliable news source hannah 100 percent it is the only news source in human history that everything they have released is fact they have never had to recant any piece of news they have never had to apologize for any false information okay everything they have released is fact and is basically making how the world is governed transparent okay it is exactly what we need in a true open democracy if we're ever going to get there okay for, for false news okay so he seeked asylum in the ecuadorian embassy he was there for five years uh six years until the government in ecuador changed and a puppet puppet government was put in power right randall how are you doing how is life thank you very much for the tier one sub and when the government changed in the ecuadorian embassy the puppet that was in place took away julian assange's ecuadorian citizenship because it was granted ecuadorian citizenship and handed over over to the uk government and uk government uh, threw him in jail for 50 weeks for skipping bail which was almost a maximum penalty that they would give out to anyone skipping bail including murderers right and as soon as his time was up for uh, to be released from that sentence charges were brought on him to be extradited to the united states and the charges are based on the 2010 releases of the collateral murder video the guantanamo bay files and the afghan war logs i believe okay he chose ecuador because ecuador granted him asylum that's why it was a long process actually for julian assange to get asylum in ecuador ecuador did not grant the asylum in uh, on a whim they looked at this they realized that he was being hunted down okay that he was a political uh, asylum seeker and on the world stage ecuador came out and said julian assange requires asylum that is not a small thing to say right who he needed asylum from from 
the UK, supposedly one of the bastions, one of the models of democracy. Just imagine, right? A government in Central America, in Latin America, right? South America granting an Australian citizen asylum to protect them from the government of the UK working on behest of the United States. This is international and it has huge implications, right? They did a very good job of attaching um, teams and size to WikiLeaks in the US. They did a very good job of attaching teams and size to WikiLeaks in the US in the in terms of the how people are perceiving what's going on right why didn't russia help them out like they helped uh, snowden russia was not did not offer to help snowden wikileaks helped snowden get out of hong kong they provided all the because snowden was being hunted as well right and we were talking within minutes within hours he could have been apprehended right and what happened was WikiLeaks arranged for Snowden to get out of Hong Kong and they were trying to get uh, Snowden to I forget where he was trying to get to uh, either because they took down the Bolivian Evo Morales is playing and this is linked up with what's going on with Evo Morales in Bolivia because at the time they were thinking that Bolivia was going to give him asylum Snowden asylum or Iceland was going to give him asylum and when the Evo Morales' plane was leaving Russia on the way to Bolivia, right? The US told their puppet governments in Europe, in the EU, and anybody that lives in, the, in Europe, maybe you be in the UK, in Spain, in France, wherever you may be, you should appreciate that your government first and foremost does the bidding of the united states because the united states told them to prevent the bolivian plane right from passing over their airspace and they forced the plane down that's unprecedented that to some would be considered an act of war right when you force down the presidential plane of another government right flying over your airspace forced it down searched the plane to find uh, snowden so snowden was stuck in russia in the airport and russia finally snowden became a hot potato russia finally said okay you can stay here right temporarily then they ecuador withdrew the asylum after an election which is to say it's shortly stupid yes it's crazy they revoked his citizenship right that means the ecuadorian government uh, did not stand by to protect their own citizen neither has the Australian government by the way so Ecuadorian government right now puppet government Australian government they both on behest of the United States have they're refusing to protect one of their own right Within hours, he could have suicided by two shots in the back of the head. Yeah. Crazy, right? Always tilted. And the two shots at the back of the head is Gary Webb, right? The one, the person uh, uh, that released the documents uh, linking the CIA with drug trafficking and whatnot, right? That literally, it was reported that uh, he, he died, right? And the coroners came out and they said he killed himself by shooting himself twice in the back of the head, right? If that's not ridiculous, I don't know what is. Riot. Yeah, a lot of US citizens feel information provided by WikiLeaks was to help Trump when really it pulled the curtains back and we saw Clinton pulling the levers of DNC elections. Not much is said about what Clinton was doing or attribute attribute it to why Trump won but ever since uh, seeing those emails I don't trust Jack in my country now 
beside maybe my boy Bernie yeah riot that's the kicker right I talk to people and they say oh WikiLeaks helped Trump get elected it's like no WikiLeaks revealed crimes that your government and your politicians were committing some would consider some of the things that were revealed in those leaks were war crimes regarding Libya right they don't talk about that which is amazing right it's like killing the messenger forgetting about the message right that is the state of education in the Western world we have been dumbed down to a level where majority of the people that are following politics have become good little serfs that abide by lies and forgo their right to live as free human beings it's insane right always tilted then they force them out of uh, airspace to search the entire plane of a president or something yeah that was bolivia that was even morales's plane right so he lost his asylum in ecuador and then was arrested by the uk uh he his citizenship was revoked by ecuador and the ecuadorian embassy the ecuadorian government allowed a foreign police agency to enter ecuadorian land sovereign land to remove one of their own citizens to be taken into custody that government does not represent the ecuadorian people the ecuadorian constitution or the interests of ecuador that government is a puppet government put in place by the u.s period right just imagine if canada did something like that wow and no actions were taken on those crimes no actions were taken on those crimes the only actions we're seeing that are t being taken on those crimes is julian assange is being crucified right killing the messenger some of those clinton emails in the wikileaks dump were weird she was sending emails that said i will be sacrificing the chicken in the backyard to mulch mulch is a god associated with yeah always tilted we're not going to go down that rabbit hole right now okay we want to focus on what's taking place with julian assange if that's okay okay because what's taking place with julian assange is unprecedented i like i don't understand well i do understand why it's not the topic of conversation uh in most mainstream propaganda machines but i had more faith in the the analytic analytic abilities the ability of people in the western world to decide for themselves uh, to a certain degree now that we have so much information what is important news and what is not right which hasn't happened because it's not on the mouths of people i talk to when it comes to politics i have to bring it up which goes to show me that our education system has been so horrendous that even pseudo intellectuals that consider themselves to be intellectuals do not understand what the game is at play okay I don't think the DNC will allow Bernie through again. Though. No, I don't think so either, Riot. Assange should uh, sue the Ecuadorian government. Uh, Assange has got a lot of things on his plates, and Assange is, hasn't been given access to his lawyers, to any means for him to defend himself. He's just basically being straight out tortured, which is what Niels is going to talk about in this video. Whose foreign policy agency was it then uh like who sent sent them to ecuador and where they did uh, uh did they take him sleepy waves the uh let me here let me give you a link okay here's a link um hannah hannah i'm gonna allow that just because um so i'm just gonna find a link here granted here we go i believe this is the article that talks about let me see if uh, it's the right one yeah so 
I highly recommend reading this interview with one of the top people that was granting the article is called granting Julian Assange political asylum was the right thing to do okay and I'll read the next part of it just a subtitle quote we knew he was in real danger as as will be confirmed now and that's why we granted him political asylum right then the u.s obviously decided that ecuador had crossed a line interview with the former foreign minister of ecuador highly recommend reading this interview i think we've talked about it previously as well uh, but this will sleepy wave this will give you a really good background of how things unfolded uh, with julian assange getting asylum at the ecuadorian embassy okay pretty important okay da, 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 da. Uh, right i mean the news for uh for most western countries is controlled by a couple of billionaires what's not to understand what's going on they control the narrative the problem is riot those same institutions or individuals or organizations that control 90 percent of the news they don't publish everything under the same news right they don't say our propaganda newspaper they call it the new york times or the washington post or the foreign uh policy or this or that or this and a lot of those institutions actually own local newspapers as well so the local newspaper uh industry has died down the last 20 years in a big way right so the same news that's being propagated propagated up here is also being disseminated to the local news so the only way that people are informed about what's going on in the world if is if they actively seek out news but our centralized education system has trained people to be passive consumers of information right is passive education what we have right now in our centralized education system so with that programming for 12 years of childhood and youth people have graduated into the same mindset that that is exactly the same way they should be consuming news a passive form of news consumption which is basically called willingly becoming a serf willingly submitting to power to program you to brainwash you to be a tool in their grand design right very unfortunate it is very difficult to reprogram people that are adults um, than it is to program them with the or installing the right type of programming in their youth because when they're adults they already have that programming installed on them so what you have to do to a certain degree is wipe that programming away or take out some of that code and reinstall certain proper codes in there so they can function as true human beings right very difficult to do right so the ideal way to do things is start educating them when they're younger right start engaging the youth because they are much more intelligent than what society deems them to be uh, always tell to chicho does assange still have his kill switch for files to be released if something happens no one knows that i don't know always tilted i'm assuming there i don't know i'm assuming there might be something i'm hoping there is something right now that will be released what was that quote from before chicho it started like for the bastardization it's uh da -da 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 -da. Um, I allowed it, so that was. The, I don't know. I allowed it, but it disappeared. I think. Um, so whoever posted it, I think it was uh, either Olive or Sleepy Waves. If you posted it, I've allowed it, so that should go through again. If you feel like posting it, but if you could use Sue, he should. Yeah. But the legal system is horrendous. Like, really, there is no justice system in. The west right now they can persecute crucify anyone they want in public so the narrative for assange is the u.s uh was wikileaks collaborated trump that is for uneducated people i read this article great one shows that ecuador is now a u.s puppet yeah 
I actually find it easier to reprogram myself now as an adult. Reprogramming yourself, Bixi, much easier, so much faster. But just imagine what you had to go through to realize that your programming was flawed. It's that initial realization, all of a sudden reality hits people where they go, wow, right? Half their lives has been a lie, right? Most people have no idea how to deal with that. They really don't. Oh yeah, and that's exactly what's going on here. Local news is flooded with either Facebook style articles meant to incite or national news that avoids any of the fuckery going on. Uh, at the local level and it's all run by the same people yeah amigo sen silo how are you doing even though it should be about the individual to learn as much as they can aren't we all the whim of the adults around us as we're growing up to a certain degree yes yes but a lot of adults have forfeited their right or their obligation to educate their children right as Krishna Krishna Morty said and we did a reading of this education and the significance of life that Krishna Morty's thesis here let me bring that up as well um, Chicho education here's a reading of excerpts of Krishna Morty's education and the significance of life yes, okay in this book short book and I highly recommend reading it if you're uh, if you want to appreciate our current education system, there's one thing that it continuously states, which is we do not love our children. Oh, Hannah, I'm going to allow that. Did it come through, Hannah? Yes, it did. Nice. Um, basically, he states in this thesis, okay, education is significant life, that we do not love our children because if we loved our children, there's no way we would force them to go into a centralized education system where they're spending 12 years minimum of their lives, six hours a day, okay, being indoctrinated, programmed, and having their curiosity crushed, right? Very important. If you have parents who don't, who don't spend time discussing politics, you will grow up ignorant about topics, agreed. But unfortunately, a lot of parents have been brought up in this current education system so they're not aware of the politics they actually need training themselves that is beyond me well that is i guess the, what i'm doing right now is part of that as well uh, we all got to do our parts i guess right do you think we should strive to uh, democratize the economy aka try to push companies to transform into worker crop uh taka yes i'm a full supportive of cooperatives collaboration and we're seeing that roll out like a lot of things that we see online right now platforms information and all this jazz right all of it most of it is brought about because of cooperation cooperatives collectives doing things right so for example right now we have uh, crowdfunding pages where if you appreciate the work of certain creators you can support them may they be patreon may they be kickstarters may they be uh subscribe star may they be direct donations may they be cryptocurrencies may they be whatever they may be right that is part of working as a collective so people are taking some of those funds that they're giving to large corporations and if you're still supporting huge large corporations in a big way i highly recommend you stop may they be disney may they be craft food may they be whatever buy locally reduce your consumption of propaganda and basically hit them in wall street hit them where the their pocketbooks are right because what most corporations are chasing is growth but not growth in human knowledge and human health and um, in in better living conditions for society they're chasing fiat currency they're chasing a certain percentage that is dictated to them from our current crony capitalistic states, right? Does Assange have a background in math too? Man, I really need to go back and teach myself some mathematics. Always tilted, uh, I'm pretty sure math. Well, Assange is pretty good at math, right? He is a programmer, 
and he was a hacker in his youth right so he took on uh, i believe so anyway he took on uh, computing pretty heavy duty in his youth and just i believe most of his stuff is self-taught but mathematics is a huge part to play in that right was the foreign policy agency sent to ecuador from the uk um was the foreign policy agent i don't know sleepy waves i'm not i don't know what you mean by the foreign policy agency i don't think people realize they are programmed in one instant it needs to be a reoccurring work from your end have to use that self autonomy sleepy waves i agree as the mantra in advertising goes the first time you advertise something people don't see it the second time they notice it the third time they recognize it the fourth time they understand it and so on and so forth right what was that quote about this uh, Assange uh, from before Chicho it started like for the bastardization I don't know uh, Hannah uh, for the bastardization was that from uh, this article here the slow motion uh, execution of Julian Assange let me see if I can do a search if it's there then that's what it is it's there okay it's not in this one unless bastardization is spelled differently maybe it's an s i know some places they use s's nope not there i don't think most americans know they're indoctrinated honestly well most americans know there is uh there is a serious problem uh, with their society most people in the western world know there's a serious problem with society with politics with economics with the way we are governed with the way we interact with social issues with finances with wall street a lot of people know that right the problem is our current education system has indoctrinated them to being passive consumers they don't know they don't know how to seek out the information i can't afford buying everything locally sadly uh, racer kill certain things i still consume from large corporations you have no choice right like hardware software um well hardware <laughs> right and a lot of other things in there but slowly that's i've reduced my corporate intake uh, tremendously right policy agency policy agency policy agency i don't know uh Steepy ways, I don't know. I've lost you. Um, Chicho, I'm just lurking, enjoying the stream. Are you still in in bad a ban mode with trolls on a song stream? Nicholas? Yes. Okay. I I lean if they're hardcore trolls, Nicholas. Yeah, just silly trolls, like weak, weak, weak trolls. Yeah. If they seem to be semi-intelligent and in wanting to engage in a more intellectual level we do whatever if you want time out for once we'll give them a warning let me know and and then we can <laughs> what's behind the stars what are this oh the stars is i believe it's a word that uh is not allowed or a link that's not uh that people can't link to okay crony capitalism is just capitalism all throughout the history capitalism worked in that and that, 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 that capitalism bah, bah, bah. to a certain degree right but you could say that about any ism who was the police agency sent by oh it was sent by uh, the uk government went in right but it was on behest of the u.s government right so it was the uk police force that went in to grab julian assange and it was basically the ecuadorian government that allowed that to happen or requested that to happen right just imagine if the canadian government requested that the british police would come into the canadian embassy to drag out a canadian citizen and put him in jail and that government would be forced to resign in canada if a person watching the stream wanted to start uh, reversing their indoctrination and becoming a uh, minimalist, where should they start? 
my problem is that i hear a lot of information about the problem of our nation but little about the solution i just don't know where to begin honestly always tilted um example when you buy food go to the grocery store seek out in your area something called csa community supported agriculture uh, usually it's in season you give them money at the beginning of the spring at the beginning of the season and they grow food for the community and every week you go get your food and it's amazing you get healthy food you get f reliable food delivered to you or picked up once a week and you're supporting your local farmers right minimal pesticides or if any usually you can find organic places right so consuming food is one place you can do it divesting yourself pulling uh, you know I don't want to give people the financial advice right now but basically stop consuming corporate propaganda stuff right do you go to the movie theaters and pay Walt Disney your money why Walt Disney force uh, passes laws gets governments past laws it's called regulatory capture where they extend copyright laws where information that was in the public domain that was supposed to come into the public domain no longer comes, comes into the public domain for another 20 years or another 40 years right? right boycotting goes a long way Teka, i agree chicha got to stop using crony capitalism why was the uk the ones to do the dirty work why wouldn't the US just do it themselves uh, because it's not the Ecuadorian embassy was not in the United States it was in the UK so under the pretext of Julian Assange skipping bail right because the UK gave the orders to arrest them because of false charges from Sweden right so they had to go sort of through the channels right as much as they want to drone julian where the u.s government has come out and said they would like to drone julian assange just kill him execute him even that will be a step too far for them so they're getting the uk government to do the work for them right horrendous should we watch this video let's watch this video there's a lot more info here sleepy waves from uh, nils melzer that we're about to watch okay this is going to be about a 15 minute video and it's the title of this video is un repertoire julian assange uh, has faced psychological torture he should be uh, he should not be extradited to the us but the discussion is a lot more than this a lot of countries involved in this mess a lot of countries involved in this mess uh, a year ago when well december it was when uh julian assange's lawyers first contacted me and asked me for to intervene on his behalf um, with various involved governments, I, I was very hesitant to, to get involved because I, I had this, this visceral reaction. I didn't know anything about the man. I had never dealt with the case, but I had this visceral reaction of, oh, this is this narcissist, this rapist, this hacker, this spy. He's going to manipulate my mandate, and I'm not going to get into this case. Because I have I receive, as you know, and yes, we receive in our mandates, we receive about 10 to 12 to 15 requests per day of potential victims of torture or other human rights violations to intervene on their behalf. So we have to make a selection because we can maybe deal with two with the resources we have. So I wasn't going to get into this case. And it took me another three months when his lawyers came back to me and said, well, there are rumors that he might be expelled from the embassy of Ecuador in London imminently and please you know look just at a few documents and then make up your mind and so I, I, I somehow felt I owed it to my professional integrity to at least look at these documents and I have to admit that as soon as I scratched the surface a little bit immediately things didn't add up with the images I had in my mind of this man so and the, the deeper I got into this the more I fabrication I basically saw and and I just saw that there was nothing to back up all these this this public narrative that had been spread about uh, Julian Assange in in the, in the media mainly or that's at least where I got it from almost passively almost through osmosis it was kind of this constant thing over the years so that started to intrigue me and I looked into this case but I and I decided 
if I get into this, this is a very politicized case. Um, I, I need to, and a very publicly, obviously, publicized case, I need to make sure I have a solid basis. So I requested the British authorities after his arrest to allow me to visit him, and I took two medical experts with me, uh, a psychiatrist and a forensic expert. Both of them have worked with torture victims for decades and you know, advised courts in distinguishing symptoms that might you know, come from ill treatment, from other symptoms, psychological ones, physical ones. So they, they really know how to distinguish these things. And, and we visited Julian Assange in Belmarsh prison on the 9th of May for four hours. Uh, I spoke with him for an hour just to get a, a good first impression. Then we had a physical examination for an hour by our forensic expert. And then we had a two-hour psychiatric uh, examination. And all the three of us had the same impression. And well, I had certainly an impression that the, the medical doctors had a diagnosis. They, we all came to the conclusion that he showed all the symptoms that are typical for a person that has been exposed to psychological torture over an extended period of time. So now, I had this result. And I have to say, well, also personally, when I met him the first time, and that the only time I met him, actually, um, he made a, uh, you know, a very rational uh, impression. A lot of anxiety I could feel. He was, uh, he was certainly uh, uh, extremely stressed and on a stress level that, that where he could never relax. And, and something that I reminded me of many of the, of the victims of torture I had seen in interrogation centers that had been indefinitely detained for a long time, um, intellectuals that, that you know, have been in isolation for a long time that would show that kind of reaction pattern, They're asking me questions and, and then I just started to answer. He would already come with next questions and very intelligent questions, but he would not even be able to compute my answers. So he was already kind of beyond that point. And, um, it put me, because he had been in a very controlled environment for more than six years, it was, we, we could identify the causes, and there was just a number of causes of, in, of factors that could have influenced his life. It was not someone that we picked up on a battlefield and we didn't know what happened to it in the last three months. But in the last six or seven years, he had been exposed to this precisely same environment that obviously evolved, but it was fairly easy to, to you know, make the, kind of the, the calculation and, and conclude what were actually the causes that have uh, uh, produced these, these symptoms. Now, we also have to be clear from a torture and ill treatment perspective, um, not everything that is, not every anxiety and stress level or pain and suffering is torture. Just because you show that symptoms does not necessarily mean that someone tortured you because there is an exception in the torture definition. So essentially torture is the deliberate and purposeful infliction of pain and severe pain and suffering in order to achieve some kind of a purpose, coercion, confession, uh, intimidation, or something like that. But there is an exception where there is pain and suffering that is inherent in lawful sanctions. Yeah, so when you have a lawful legal proceeding and someone is lawfully detained, obviously they will be stressed. And the longer it lasts, the more they will be stressed. Um, so, and that's, um, that obviously is a, a level of anxiety that is just inherent in a lawful measure. So the question was, was his detention lawful? And I, when I looked at all the evidence, and I'm not going to go, obviously, in every single detail here, but if this were about applying the law, then he would not have been sentenced to a 50-week uh, imprisonment simply for, you know, for bail violation in the UK for a case that at the time was not even uh, pending anymore. The Swedes had at the time had terminated that case, had dropped the case. Um, and he had violated that bail condition because he had received asylum from p political persecution given by a UN member state, Ecuador. And that is not a grave violation of the bail conditions. And in the UK, bail violations don't routinely lead to prison sentences. It's just a fine or maybe a minor sentence that might not even be uh, uh, served in the end. Um, so that was clearly excessive. But, so that was not about applying the law regularly. 
Then we also saw that British judges showed from the first day, when he was arrested and brought to court, they showed extreme bias against him. They called him a narcissist, although in that hearing he had said nothing except, I plead not guilty. And I'm, I'm a professor at a British university, and I, I'm, you know, I consider the UK a rule of law state, and, and, and one of the leading ones. And to me, that was very odd. And then I saw, so we have an excessive sentence. We have judges calling, insulting him for saying nothing, basically. Uh, we had a judge leading the extradition proceedings until recently who had a documented conflict of interest. Her husband had been exposed by WikiLeaks. And his defense lawyers had tried to make that case, and that was simply ignored. And until a two weeks ago, I believe, uh, Julian Assange never had access to legal documents. So how do you prepare a defense, which is a basic human right, when you're facing all these proceedings and you don't even have access to your legal documents? When in the extradition hearings, the, the judge asks him, um, sir, can you, you know, how do you react to the US indictment? And he said, well, I, I haven't received it. That, that's not the rule of law. So this is not about applying the law. That's not a lawful proceeding. Then we look at the Swedish proceedings. It's the same thing. It's totally arbitrary when a state conducts a preliminary investigation. He's never been charged of anything in Sweden. He's not charged of sexual offenses, never been. The case has been opened, three days later have been closed because there was no evidence for any offense at all. Chief prosecutor of Stockholm saying that. And a different prosecutor takes it up again based on the statement of the the purported victim, which had been adapted, changed by the police without consulting the victim in order to have a stronger basis for a rape case. And it goes on and on and on. You have strange evidence, condoms that have no DNA on them and uh, which, is, which supposedly have been used. I mean, it, it, it goes on and on and on. It's one contradiction after the other and Sweden never gets beyond the stage of a preliminary investigation, which simply means someone has alleged rape and they have still not decided whether they want to charge him or not after nine years. And that's what has kept him in detention in Ecuador, in the Ecuadorian embassy for so long, and under that constant pressure. And then we see the US proceedings, with all due respect, but you have, you know, the grand jury proceedings have their own particularities, right? S secret evidence, um, uh, a jury selection, which obviously in that area uh, will result in a certain amount of bias within the jury. Um, we have the history of the so-called espionage court, which uh, 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 has its own problematics. Um, 17 of the 18 charges basically refer to, or to activities that are the basic business of any investigative journalist, um, which brings in the whole freedom of press and freedom of opinion uh, 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 problematic here. And the 18th charge, the first one that the US disclosed, refers to uh, Julian Assange supposedly having attempted to help Chelsea Manning to decode a password, but not succeeded. So if every time someone tries to de you know, type in a password and decode it and it doesn't work, you get extradited to the US for espionage, um, I, there's something slightly disproportionate in this. I mean, there's something that doesn't add up in all these proceedings when it's about depriving or terminating the asylum of Julian Assange by Ecuador and terminating his citizenship, that is done without any legal proceeding whatsoever. The president just decides that's what we're gonna to do today. He is being informed he's kicked out of the embassy or arrested by the Brits in the embassy that very day. So uh, we see that there we have no due process proceeding whatsoever. And so UK, US, Ecuador, Sweden, all these legal proceedings, severe violations of due process consistently. This is not about prosecuting someone for an offense. This is not about uh, applying the law. 
the story, we have to take a step back. What has the man done? He has disclosed enormous amounts of, of information that governments wanted to, to stay secret, uh, to remain secret. And obviously, uh, we know, obviously, most famously or most infamously, the, you know, the, the collateral murder video, which is, in my view, as a former ICRC legal advisor, having worked with the law of war for many years, it's, it's evidence for war crimes. And what is the scandal in this case is that everybody focuses on Julian Assange and his cat and his skateboard and having, you know, allegations that are, you know, having smeared pieces on the wall and all these types of things that are not, there's no evidence whatsoever for any of these. And as if these were war crimes, even if they were true, but no one looks at the war crimes. And I think that's the big story here. And that's what I, why I get passionate about this case, because here is someone who discloses evidence for war crimes, including torture, murder, um, all kinds of uh, corrupt activities going on. And everybody focuses on Julian Assange and his domestic obligations in, in the embassy. So that, and, 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 and therefore, there is no justification for uh, detaining him in this isola uh, in isolation and having him under this constant pressure where he knows he cannot trust anybody of the, uh, no official authority. He will be certainly exposed to an arbitrary trial if he, in the UK, extradition trial, the choreography is clear. Whatever his lawyers say, in the end, the UK judges will say, yes, of course, we cannot extradite him if there's death penalty or torture or treatment, so please, US, make assurances. The US will obviously make these assurances, and then the UK will say that we have no reason uh, not to trust the US, and they will extradite him to, to the US. That's what I uh, foresee. And that's what he ex expects him here, and that's the, the crux here. In, in addition to the ill treatment he has already suffered, I am absolutely convinced that he will not get a fair trial, get a show trial, uh, in East Virginia, and he'll end up uh, in prison under inhumane conditions for the rest of his life. That needs to be prevented. That's Niels Melzer, the United Nations. Sorry about that little click click at the end. El gato potato. Let's stay on Julian Assange, please. Okay. Any good man is so annoying. Yep, she has become so. That's for sure. That's why I didn't show her thing earlier. Right? Thank you. Let me catch that. Thank you for sharing the video show. My pleasure, Sleepy Waves. I go through, uh, I try to go through a fair bit of info. Um, some of it annoying, but within some of the annoying pieces, there are things that we need to have as reference and view and really appreciate what's happening right um that being said uh, democracy now does still provide little bits of info that are well worth tracking right forget about u.s domestic policy that's noise right um that was pretty serious like what Nils, um, Nils Melsner was saying, right? That was pretty serious. The prosecution of Assange is working as a cover up for all the war crimes that no one is talking about now. 100% Olive, which is absolutely, uh, like for me, you have to appreciate uh, if you follow history, I've been following history for a long time. I've, been following politics for a long time and whatnot and anybody that has been following politics if you've never lived through a period like now right and what we're living through right now is is unprecedented right there are certain situations in history where you look back and you ask yourself how is it possible that the citizens of nations could allow certain things to transpire right we're living through one of those periods right now, right? Like for me growing up, just being bombarded with history, I always, you know, 
try to figure out how World War I came to be, how it was allowed for the Armenian Genocide to take place or the Holocaust to take place and World War II and the tr atrocities in China and how Latin America death squads could take over and stuff like this, right? It, it's always, it was unbelievable to me that citizens, there were people that actually supported these regimes, right? These actions. And once we look at our situation right now, you realize that people really didn't re know what they were supporting. They were unconscious of it. They weren't really even, you couldn't even really consider them to be, uh, what word should we use? Awake, aware? Like conscious is the best word I could use. I can come up with right now that they're not really conscious of what is happening in the world. They have become people to a certain degree have become machines and reactionaries and just doing what is expected of them, but not expected of them based on their own morals or their family's morals or for the protection of their family or anything on that level. They're reacting according to what centralized institutions, wherever they live, want them to react. People have become puppets. It's amazing. It really is absolutely mind boggling. And for me, you know, there's a saying that says, be careful what you wish for, or be careful what you, what you try to understand or whatever it is. I've always wondered how people in the past could live in such a way could react in such a way, could stand idly by while atrocities happen. We watch it right now and it's it's enlightening. It's scary how it seems like such distant history that we allowed such things to happen. But when you have Holocaust survivors still alive, you realize how it's not that far back. No, you still have Armenians that live through the genocide of World War I from 1918 right a handful now uh one of them recently passed away right okay uh, incredible stuff going on incredible stuff going on um this is another article okay it appeared on the world socialist website uh i'm not going to go to you know the letter that was published on the guardian the guardian is a rag as far as i'm concerned right but uh, it's a pretty long piece we'll read a little bit of it and we can chat um you know I'll participate in the chat but i think this is sort of the last uh, article we have time to read right now uh at some point i believe i'm gonna read the internal opcw email the intro for it and put that as a video as well and maybe even dig down to some of the some of the emails to see what juicy stuff comes out uh crazy stuff comes out okay uh people around the south uh globe are rising up look at the tsunami in latin america it's just everyone in western countries are too comfortable to do anything besides vote sleepy waves uh, to a certain degree i agree with you right but what was what was rolled out in south america and latin america okay uh, the neoliberal, uh, neoconservative economic model, right, is being rolled out in the Western world when it comes to austerity, privatization, and whatnot. You're seeing it unfold in different countries and in different states and in different provinces in the West, right? And people are starting to get shaken up a little bit. And that shaking up is scaring people into joining factions that in the limit will either murder them or enslave them so we're seeing some of that stuff take place right now a lot of us have many of us many people in the west we hope that what's happening in latin america and south america specifically and central america is successful in ousting their warlords really liberal uh, neoliberal neoconservatives masters right because if that's successful there then those people will lose power here 
so we hope definitely even voting is a chore not are all willing to do and when they do they vote often with little more but a gut feeling yeah or they identify themselves with a certain political movement right or a certain political party it's not even a movement a certain political party there are people that are very proud to announce that they are lifelong in the u.s democrats or lifelong republicans that means they have never ever questioned their political party they have never asked themselves why it is they are supporting a certain institution unbelievable right so you think it's only a matter of time before the same neoliberal economic models take over in the west uh sleepy waves they're already taking over in the west the neoliberal models are already taken over in the west in canada alberta you you're already been seeing it rolling out right they're privatizing many things they're closing hospitals they're closing schools they're privatizing hospitals they're privatizing schools they're cutting pensions they're taking away uh, social security while well, the equivalent of social security uh the retirement savings plans are being gutted um people are being fired overtime is being cut uh they, the same models that have been rolled out in south america they are already being rolled out in the west people are just not aware of it many people is because in the west many people are not aware of what took place in latin america all right they don't get it they don't understand that they're not the first to go through this it's just a model that has been rolled out for a number of decades in different parts of the world and unfortunately they believe their masters when their masters say they must have less food they must have less health care right they don't understand that these masters have been looting the land for a number of decades alberta is a perfect example really in canada i don't think it is it's just the necessities of the bureaucratic process that comes along with such a massive undertaking but how can you oh hold on voting is a chore or purpose but how can they oust their warlords if we are willing to throw billions to make sure a new puppet takes place tango po i'm 17 i barely understand any of this but it's relaxing to stay too awesome tango focus on your school do well on, on in school really okay tang po very very important but make sure you're not being just indoctrinated make sure you question what you are being told if you're if you're in school being taught history go online and do search regarding that history to make sure that it's not just propaganda it's not indoctrination right incredible stuff should we read a little bit on this not nah, tango fuck your indoctrinated education listen to each other. no sleepy waves tango educate yourself if you need to be in an institution to learn do it however question what you are being taught half the stuff you're being taught is going to be garbage the other half is going to be very important depending on what discipline you're studying right if it's mathematics 95 percent of what you're being taught if you're getting a math degree is it's math you need it right it might not be the exact discipline you go down you, you know you might want to go into uh statistics and they're taught teaching you uh discrete algebra or linear algebra or whatever it is i think stats overlaps with that anyway but um or topography or whatever it is right if you're studying social sciences then maybe 10 percent fact and 90 percent fiction i don't know right i know a little of the past i should read some more history do you have any good sources or books you would recommend that will give a good understanding of past events specifically those of us that have provide provided um, event change in the world uh, olive um uh, howard zinn look up howard zinn here let me do a little search he's written a number of books okay uh, this is his website so here Howard Zinn 
Okay, here's Howard Zinn's website. And here, let me give you this. And let me give you one other person as well. Um, uh, John Pilger. So Howard Zinn is a historian. John Pilger is a journalist. But without a doubt, John Pilger uh, in the top five respective, respected journalists in the world, he's one of the top two. <laughs> like really, ask anyone to name one respected journalist in the world or top, their top five respected journalists in the world or their top 10 respected journalists in the world. John Pilger should be in the top two. Okay. I just say top two because right now I can't really, aside from Julian Assange, right? But Julian Assange has only been a journalist for the last 10, 15, 12 years or so with, with let's say 15 years, right? John Pilger has been a journalist since the 1960s, 1970s. And without a doubt, to me, he is, he deserves everything beyond leaps and bounds. One of the doc documentaries you need to watch, and this is a very enlightening documentary, is uh, videos, DVDs, videos, let's see if it's here. It's called, um, and you can watch this stuff, but start off with year zero, okay? John Pilger, here, let me give you this as well. Year zero. Video. A Cambodia full documentary about John Pilger, 1990. Here we go. This, 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 this. Uh, year zero, part one. Find uh, here. Uh, here, I'm just going to give you the duck, duck, go search. Think for this, uh, Olive. But look into John Pilger's. Watch this documentary, Year Zero. Now you have to have an appreciation for this documentary, Year Zero. It's about Cambodia and whatnot. The the BB uh, PBS. It was supposed to be. This is this was a. I believe if I remember my history correctly. Um, this was a documentary that was funded by the public broadcasting service and stuff like this. And John Pilger made the documentary in real time. He was there in Cambodia. Okay. And when the documentary was made, it was supposed to be aired in the United States. And before the air dates hit, right? And they were supposed to be during like prime time, like peak times of watching documentaries and TV and stuff. And remember, this was before the internet. Word came down from the US government uh, telling the broadcasters not to air this documentary. And this documentary during the first years, the first time it aired in the United States, aired at 1 a.m. in the morning on one channel once on PBS, right? Public Broadcasting Service in the United States at 1 a.m. in the morning, from what I understand, once. And it didn't air again for a number of years because the deep state, the wars, the war machine did not want this information to come out. After that, look into everything else that John Pilger has done as written and has written. Okay. Yeah, with history, the question is always who wrote it? Tricky business, tricky business indeed. Change is coming either way. I saw something uh, today in my morning br browsing that the millennial age group is projected out, uh, projected out to own 3% of the U.S. wealth at age 35 that sounds like right numbers to me for tons of compliant little serfs or the current economic system collapsing right if they only own three percent when they're 35 are they going to be consuming as much as the previous generations no what are they going to be consuming that's the other question right that's why tech companies are so huge right because it doesn't really cost that much to consume information, to consume entertainment, to consume technology, right? You could be entertained for a long time with games, with videos, with this, with this, with this, with this, right? So a lot of legacy companies are about to go under in the next 20 years. Good. 
man the people's history was the first book yeah howard zinn's people history of the united states i read where i immediately started going what the fuck have i been learning the past 30 years and here's another thing I'll, uh, let me give you another uh, on contact chris hedges ba -da 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 -da. Let me show you a recent interview this one watch this interview okay i'm gonna link this up to you guys and here's a kicker right don't trust google don't trust youtube they keep on saying this rt is funded and whole and part by the russian government but they don't say the same thing about cbc pbs bbc or anything like that right and this is cia search for mind control with stephen kenzer this is an extremely important interview guys and girls okay very important interview watch this interview it'll make your head spin got to go to work bro thanks for the stream hope you're okay without a mod and don't get any trolls the stream seems solid though thanks nicholas thank you for sticking around brother and uh enjoy the new work right and let us know when you do the deed right you know when it comes to allowing atrocity i recently said to someone uh how i can uh, did i read that yeah how i can not believe a nation could live down the guilt of using news for real right after i said that my heart skipped a beat when i thought oh wait the u.s did you're right consumption goes down chicho that, that try and find criticism of putin and rt though ah uh, they do criticize they do criticize oh not on the main rt channel uh, well indeed uh, not on the main rt station but the individual shows some of them do criticize uh, chris hedges does right but for sure try and find criticism hillary clinton and then right says right facts this interview is amazing here's another interview that's amazing let me find the other one it was recent i would i would highly recommend uh, really let me give you chris hedges rt on, on contact this is one show i don't agree with everything here okay i really don't uh but i would i will listen to i check out let's say all the interviews chris has just done 90 percent of them i listen from beginning to end clinton news i'm excited to watch that interview watch that interview you're gonna it's gonna blow you away another one you should watch is the one previous to this on contact resistance and the left with paul street watch this interview watch this interview very very important very very important riot or trump or fox news not to point at one party it's all a racket to keep us arguing 100 percent riot i agree you get your news from people you trust right chris hedges i trust i don't agree with everything he says but i trust him right i trust that he has the best intentions of humanity in mind shameful how journalism is tailored like just about any other product to the market yes indeed 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 back to julian assange back to julian assange All right let me have a little sip if you guys want to talk about anything we can we got another about 20 minutes are left on the stream uh but let me read you a little bit of this article regarding uh the doctors that have written a letter to the uk government saying that julian assange's life is at risk right now okay and this is by laura Tiernan. okay and the title of the article let me give you the link for it as well and here's a link to the article okay uh, and i'm going to keep the chat up 
Title of the article, Darker, Doctors Demand Urgent Medical Intervention to Save Julian Assange's Life by Laura Turnan, uh, released November 25, 2019. More than 65 eminent doctor, medical doctors from the UK and around the world have issued an open letter calling for urgent action to protect the life of imprisoned WikiLeaks founder and journalist Julian Assange. The doctors warn there may be serious consequences if Assange is not moved from Belmarsh Prison to University Teaching Hospital where he can be assessed and treated by an expert medical team. Quote, were such urgent assessment and treatment not to take place, end quote, they write, quote again, you know what, I'm going to take out the quotes, I'm just going to read it. So back to the first, uh, this paragraph, were such urgent assessment and treatment not to take place, they write, we have real concerns on the evidence currently available that Mr. Assange could die in prison. The medical situation is thereby urgent. There is no time to lose. Their letter is addressed to UK Home Secretary Preti Patel, Patel and has been copied to Labour's Shadow Home Secretary Diane Abbott. The doctor's extraordinary intervention in the midst of the British general election coincides with a groundswell of popular opposition to the relentless state persecution of Assange. The Australian-born journalist faces extradition to the United States and a 175-year prison term for exposing U.S. war crimes in Iraq and Afghanistan. Dr. Stephen Frost, a specialist in diagnostic radiology, began drafting the open letter with colleagues in late October. He was moved to act after reading the harrowing account of Assange's October 21st court appearance at London's Westminster Magistrate Court writ written by former British diplomat and whistleblower Craig Murray. And we read that piece, by the way, by Craig Murray in either the first or second live stream we did when Assange started facing extradition, right? Back to the article. I was shocked. Frost recalled, as a doctor, I suddenly realized that things were a lot worse than I had previously thought and that I needed to do something. Signatories have backed the findings on Assange by UN Special Rapporteur on Torture, Nils Melzer. Melzer visited Assange at Belmash Prison with two medical experts on May 9th. His team found Assange was suffering the effects of prolonged psychological torture after nearly a decade of arbitrary detention and state persecution. On November 1st, Melzer warned, Mr. Assange's continued exposure to arbitrariness and abuse may soon end up costing his life. Frost said Melzer's intervention had been critical. He did his job fearlessly and he was... Uh, discarded but he disregarded but he was an expert in his field and we uh, respected his opinion you can tell when someone is speaking the truth senior medical doctors in the uk and from sweden the us australia germany italy and sri lanka have signed the open letter they include leading psych psychiatrists clinical psychologists neurologists surgeons and general practitioners Medical doctors have a professional um, duty to report suspected torture of which they be be become aware. Wherever it may occur, the signatory set right. That professional duty is absolute and must be carried out regardless of risk to reporting doctors. The letter presents a timeline of deteriorating health for, for Assange inside the Ecuadorian embassy with the UK government repeatedly denying him access to hospital treatment. In December 2015, the United Nations Working Group on Arbitrary Detention found that Mr. Assange's health could have deteriorated to such a level that anything more than a superficial illness would put his health at a serious risk. The letter's medical timelines timeline ends with Assange's current downward spiral into Belmash 
signatories report their serious concern, uh, concerns about Assange's fitness to stand trial in February 2020. Week-long U.S. extradition hearings are due to start on February 24th, with, with Assange still confined to Belmarsh Prison's health ward, described by prisoners as the hell ward. In Adenum to the open letter, cites a climate of fear and intimidation surrounding, surrounding the provisions of medical care for, to Assange. It reports a psycho psychological expert who complained of difficulties in finding medical practitioners who were willing to examine Mr. Assange due to their fear of government reprisals. The signatories conclude that all this has been played out in the heart of London for many years in a source of great is a source of great sadness and shame to many of us with their open letter doctors in the UK and inter internationally are refusing to be silenced they have honored their professional obligations and taken a courageous stand to protect the life of Julian Assange as dr. Frost told the world socialist website sometimes a med medicine as in other spheres of life, extraordinary situations can only be solved by taking an educated leap into the unknown and seeking extraordinary solutions. The open letter is published here. Doctors from around the world can add their names to the current list of signatories by contacting doctorsforassange at gmail.com. And if we click on the link, it takes us to the letter open letter open letter concerns of medical doctors about the plight of Julian Assange open letter to the US uh, uh, UK government so we might end up reading this in the next Julian Assange live stream we're gonna do this at least uh, probably twice a week or so I'm just gonna link up this article in the chat as well so you guys have it and we're gonna continue with this reading uh, statements from signatories so the following are just statements made by the signatories so let's read these as well okay dr stephen frost specialist in diagnostic radiology stockholm sweden first we must save julian assange's life and then we must safeguard his health at least as far as that will be possible then we can all discuss how it ever came about that no fewer than five states the uk the us australia sweden and ecuador seemingly deliberately and cruelly conspired against one human being we agree with the assessment of nils melzer united nations special repertoire on torture that julian assange has been psychologically tortured in the in the center of london in the center of uh, of london of all places we will leave it to others to determine precisely how and why that has been allowed to happen. People around the world expect the United, United Kingdom to do the right thing, even if blatantly, if, even if blatantly, bl belatedly. If the UK government does not heed doctors' warnings and continues with its current recklessness, dangerous and cruel behavior, people from all over the world will rightly call for those responsible to be held to, held to account. We say that situations in medi uh, is medically urgent and that is that it must not be allowed to continue. There is no time to lose. The torture must stop now. The next statement from Dr. Sue uh, Wareham, OAM, retired general practitioner, Australia. Julian Assange, like other detainees, has a right to adequate health care, which, from the evidence of several experienced observers, he is being denied. This is totally unacceptable and makes a mockery of any pretense of justice or due process. It is imperative that he receive full and timely health care for any physical and mental health conditions. Many Australians are alarmed at our government's apparent abandonment of Julian Assange, which is all the more shameful given Assange's deteriorating health. It seems that the government cares more for hiding allegations of war crimes, such as the incidents that Assange helped bring to light, than for investigating them. Those accused of or uh, 
implicated in war crimes should face court rather than those who who provided evidence as the australian and other governments lie about the disastrous wars and other shameful events our nation gets involved in and use national security as a stock standard pretext for government secrecy ordinary citizens rely increasingly on whistleblowers to document truths that the public have a right to know whistleblowers must be protected not punished the next statement from professor andrew samuels professor of uh, analytical psychology university of essex recently retired former chair uk council for psycho psychotherapy okay. those psychotherapists such as myself who work with individuals who have politically uh, who have been politically traumatized know well that it is the collective government smearing undermining isolating reputational damage as well as physical torture that undermines self-confidence and physical well-being imagine how it is for assange believing that he is regarded by all as an evil man as outside humanity the knowledge that there is to the contrary informed and well-grounded support and understanding from mental health pro pro professionals and others in self therapeutic uh, is is in itself therapeutic okay let me read that sentence again the last sentence the knowledge that it that there is to the contrary informed and well-grounded support and understanding from mental health professionals and others is in itself therapeutic dr lisa johnson phd clinical psychologist australia as it stands serious questions surround not only the health impacts of assange's detention conditions but his medical fitness to stand trial and prepare his defense independent specialist uh, specialist medical assessment is therefore needed to determine whether julian assange is medically fit for any of his pending legal proceedings consistent with its commitment to human rights and rule of law the uk government must heed the urgent warning of medical professionals from around the world and trans transfer julian assange to an appropriately specialized and expert hospital setting before it's too late the signatories to this open letter refuse to be silenced and are standing openly alongside the numerous medical and human rights authorities who have called repeatedly and urgently for the dangerous medical neglect of Julian Assange to end. Okay. And that's this article on the World Socialist Forum that I've linked to. Okay. Uh, good article, worth noting. And this is the open letter uh, that we'll have a read through. I believe in next uh, Julian Assange live stream. I'll just pin it uh, to make sure we make a note of it. Okay. Good evening, Camel Barons. How are you doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm actually going to add this to our little note thing that we have. All right. Uh, da -da -da. Medical. So basically, I'm keeping a little tab and I'm going to just a little notepad available so for me to keep track of the information that we've been sharing okay and we just read that one and we just read this one and we just read this one so in the next Julian Assange live stream, we'll probably read the doctor's report and we might start reading some of the additional leaks from uh, WikiLeaks. Okay. When's the next political stream? Uh, Sleepy Waves, uh, most likely next week, towards the end of next week or the following weekend. I, we might have one this weekend coming up, but I'm a little behind in things. Uh, I need to take care of some editing. I need to upload some videos. Uh, I need to do some back end work and stuff like this, but I'll try to maybe arrange one for this weekend coming up. Um, uh, try my best anyway. Okay. If not the following weekend, for sure. Doing great. Uh, thanks waiting for the Champions League games. 
Good to catch you live. Glad to have you here, Camel. Glad to have you here. Champions League, it's not the final, it's just the roundabouts that are going, coming on, isn't it? Lots of information to take in, gang. I want to thank you guys for being here. Um, we'll call the stream. Tomorrow, we're going to be doing a live stream uh, mathematics, starting, I believe, at 2 p.m. Pacific time, my time. Okay. Chicho, do you identify as a creative person? Uh, I like sharing. I don't know if that means I'm a creative person or not. Um, I, I live my life. Part of, I think, uh, my opinion is we are here on Earth not just to consume, right? But also to create. May it be create music, may it be create poetry, writings, videos, uh, write, talk politics, economics, introduce new models into our society, do mathematics, do physics, do chemistry. We're here to interact with the world. And if you're interacting with the world in any sense whatsoever, you're creating. What's happening on Wednesday and Saturday? Uh, tomorrow we're doing math at uh at uh at 2 p.m i'm just going to my patreon page uh because that's where i'm since uh, twitch took out the uh the event stuff uh i used to just go to the events but tomorrow uh, we're doing a drop in math tutoring session uh, and we're doing it starting at 2 p.m. on uh, well tomorrow Wednesday okay and then I haven't set up any other live streams uh, uh, past this but uh, we will we will definitely you know look for the announcement uh, and we'll definitely do more Julian Assange current events mathematics and we're gonna get into more comic books and uh, cooking as well slowly okay lots to do so little time so little time right it's a quick life we live we got to make the best of it right share as much as we can okay gang let's call the stream thank you for being here thank you for the discussion um i'm finding the stuff uh very rejuvenating uh because just having these discussions gives me fuel to create more, to share more, to produce more. And if you want to have a read through the uh, the Gitmo files, Guantanamo Bay files, I just recently loaded on the soft spoken reading of the Gitmo files, the introduction for it. That gives you sort of an idea of the type of content that WikiLeaks is providing. And you can look at our uh, WikiLeaks Julian Assange playlist and at the beginning of that playlist we have a reading of vault 7 which is a really important leak that was revealed a couple of years ago huge really huge 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 okay as big as the collateral murder and the guantanamo files bye olive i hope you have a fantastic fantastic tuesday and uh, everyone else i hope you guys have a fantastic day and if you can make it i'll see you guys tomorrow okay bye for now